and welcome back to another one and this will be the first in three videos where I cover the process that went into creating the intro for that you just saw for this video and the first part will cover the texturing and the second part will cover the lighting and the last part will cover uh, some of uh, the animation so in this video I want to cover the texturing process and mostly why 4D textures are really cool for motion graphics and just animated projects in general. So all three parts are already up on Patreon right now so if you want to check them out you can become a Patreon and watch them over at Patreon. So let's just get into the video. The reason why I find 4D textures really cool for motion graphics projects is that if you when you're using say 2d textures it only allows you to move and transform the texture in two axes so like the x and the y like on a flat surface and when you switch to 3d textures it all it adds the z axis so you can move the texture along the z uh, the x and the y axis when you switch to 4d you'll notice an extra slider that pops up and you, uh, you can think of this slider label W as just like an extra spatial dimensions, the way you have the x, uh, the x axis, the y axis, and the z axis. You can think of the W as an axis just like that, only you can't perceive uh, in which direction it, it's moving. And because you can't perceive uh, this axis, when you animate the W value, you will see this, you have this cool effect where the, you have movement and animation inside your texture but it doesn't really distort how the texture is mapped onto your object so this value allows you to do really cool things with your texture uh, like this and it doesn't just work with uh, the Voronoi texture all the textures that support uh, this 4d option have the ability to do this so you can do some really cool trippy stuff so you may have come across on the internet a game called Miegakure which plays around with this concept of a fourth dimension, a fourth spatial dimension in a really really cool way. If you haven't seen it I'll leave a link down in the description and you can see geometry popping in and out of existence in the 3D world of the game as the objects disappear in and out of the fourth dimension. So it's a really cool concept which you can check out and it can help you understand just this for this thing about 4D uh, better. So to texture this shoe, I'll begin with the main part of the shoe, uh, which is the part that covers the most surface on the shoe. And it's the only part that will be taking an image texture. Uh, the rest I'll be using procedural textures. And so I'll unwrap this part and I usually unwrap and then export the, the UV map. And then I'll create my texture in an external software like Inkscape or GIMP or Photoshop. And then after creating my texture over there, and then I'll bring it back inside Blender and continue uh, texturing the shoe. And you'll notice that the shoe is, the texture is a black and white image. And I intentionally made it that way because I don't want to have the colors baked into the texture. Um, I made it black and white so that it gives me more flexibility when if I want to change the colors uh, right inside Blender. So to color the shoe, I'm just using a mix color node and then mixing the using the top input for the texture. And then the bottom input will take the color, whichever color I want to use to color the shoe. And then I'll just set the blend mode to color. And when you slide uh, this this slider, you'll see it moving from the color of the texture to whichever color that you want so this just gives me much more control if say i want to create a duplicate of the shoe i can just duplicate the shoe duplicate the material and then use this color to tweak and create a shoe that looks different and i wanted to give this shoe because it's a football shoe and i wanted to because it's made it's a shoe made for kicking i wanted to give it this uh, dangerous vibe like someone's been kicking uh, things he shouldn't have so that's why I have this uh, splatter pattern from the front part of the shoe uh, towards the back I also use this carbon fiber texture to give the shoe this uh, bump map 
to get it to look just uh, less smooth and just a bit more uh, realistic. And I'm not trying to get it to look all the way realistic. I just want to have something that looks good enough and run smoothly inside Eevee. I'll also select this bottom part and give it a separate material and we'll come back to that later because I want it to have a separate material that kind of matches uh, the bottom part of the shoe. So for this top part, I'm going to use the Voronoi uh, procedural texture and set it to distance to edge because this is the mode I want to use and then just use a color ramp to crush the contrast until I just have a li these lines enclosing these cells and at the same time I'll use the same color ramp node to color uh, the pattern and just have black lines enclosing red cells. Uh, the bottom part is going to have two materials. One is a metallic material for the for the pointy parts that give you grip as you run. Um, I'm, I don't really know what they're called. I don't really know what any of these shoe parts are called except for the laces. Anyway, the first material will be metallic to uh, on the pointy parts. And for the, for the rest of the parts, I want to have the same Voronoi pattern we've been using. But I want it to have it appear at the back and then fade out towards the front. And then also the colors will be flipped. I want to have red lines enclosing black cells. So I'll create that Voronoi pattern with uh, the flipped colors. And then to get that pattern to fade out as it, as it moves towards the front, I'll use this gradient texture and use it as a mask at this mix color node and just use the mapping and the color ramp to tweak and just find exactly where and where I want that uh, fading out to appear. And then I'm going to use that same material with the fading out effect and duplicate it for this strip that we created earlier or for this top part. And then I'll just flip the gradient so that on this part, on this strip, the pattern will appear from the front and fade out as it goes towards the back. And then you can also use the mapping and the gradient to just fine tune and find, find where you like it. So yeah, that, that was pretty much it for this one. And you can now use the patterns and the procedural textures with all the controls that you have and combine them with other shaders like an emission shader to create really cool effects and when you animate that uh, W value in the 4D texture. And it gives you just really cool effects and you can play around with it and see what you can, what you can do with it. I'm pretty sure there's a lot more that you can do with this that I haven't figured out yet. And I'm still playing around with this technique. In fact, I really hope that sometime in the future, they will, the modifiers will be able to support these 4D textures. At the moment, they don't. Because I think it would open up uh, uh, doors to do like really, really cool stuff if you could get modifiers to interact with these 4D textures. For example, I was thinking if, because to me, from playing around with it, it seems like the W value displaces the textures along the normals or along all the normals of all the faces in your mesh. So I was thinking if you could make use these 4D textures with the displace modifier, you could sort of create like a boiling water effect or something close to that using these, using this technique. But um, I don't know, just thinking and just play around with it and see what you could come up with. I'll see you in the